Our next guest recently won the Governor General's Award for Nonfiction for his book, Bee Time. He is an expert on bees, these small and humble creatures that make our lives possible. But he is also the founding director for the Center of Dialogue at SFU. He believes that everyone needs to go beyond their area of expertise and comfort and reach out and share with others. His life work has been about collaboration and mentorship and many other surprising things he learned from bees. Please welcome Mark Winston. I am a scientist, an entomologist, a data nerd, and yet in 2002 I left the uh, scientific laboratory behind and I became the founding director of Simon Fraser University's Center for Dialogue. And the most frequent question I get asked is, what's a bee guy doing founding a center for dialogue? It doesn't seem to make any sense. And one of the reasons I wrote this book, Bee Time, Lessons from the Hive, was to answer that question. What's the relationship between bees and dialogue? What can we learn from bees about this wonderful interaction that we have when it really works when we dialogue together successfully? The first thing I learned from being around bees is the idea of presence. Time just slows down for me when I go into an apiary. I become really focused. I listen. I'm fully present in the moment. And that's very much a bee quality. Bees are really present to each other in the moment. And that's a key element of dialogue, that sense of slowing down and being fully in that dialogue moment. I'm particularly fond of this uh, picture, by the way, because uh, notice the glasses. When I was young, those were considered nerd glasses. Now they're hipster. <laughs> and I so wish that I had saved those glasses. <laughs> So this idea of presence, being fully in the moment, that's one thing I've learned from bees that translated well into the world of dialogue. Another thing I learned from bees is the idea of repose. Uh, bees are not actually busy as a bee. That's a misnomer. Bees spend most of their time resting. They're not workaholics, they're restaholics. The function of all that rest is to keep reserve work possible in the hive so that if danger happens or there's an opportunity like blooming flowers, they can take advantage of it. But bees have learned this great quality of allocating their time and relaxing. Dialogue is like that too. Dialogue is a reserved art. It requires not frenetic activity, not the kind of frantic life most of us lead today, but an attitude of calm repose. And that's something I learned from the bees as well that carried over into dialogue. Dialogue is also about communication and listening. And bees are consummate listeners. They listen to each other in so many different channels. Here you see a, bee, a group of bees around the queen picking up her pheromones, communicating chemically. And that's one way that bees listen to each other. But they also use their eyes. They use vibrations. They use sound, electricity, uh, electrical field, magnetic fields. They have all kinds of channels that are constantly open. They're listening to other bees not judging about the background or the history or the individual experiences. They're not argumentative, they're curious. They're trying to access the full information set of what's present around them. And it's that diversity of perspectives that's so vital to bees. And in dialogue, it's the same thing. It's that diversity of voices that are vital to a successful dialogue. There's no point in having a conversation with people you already know. It's like my, uh, my Facebook friends. They all agree with me about everything. And on Facebook, I learn nothing that's different. But in a true dialogue, as in a functioning beehive, we're listening to the full range of voices and learning from each other. Dialogue and bees are also about collaboration. That's the outcome for bees of all that listening. It's what honeybees do with that array of information. The hive is a highly collaborative and a non-adversarial environment. Individuals cooperate. Take something like comb building, for example. Honeybee comb, marvel of animal architecture, thousands and thousands of cells exactly the same, but it takes a village to build them. And yet, it takes individuals too. Here you see an individual bee with wax flakes. Beeswax, they metabolize from honey. They will pull that wax off from each other, mold it with their mouth parts, 
mold it with their legs, and build this beautiful, consistent comb. It's a wonderful example of how solitary becomes communal. The activities of individuals collaborate to something that is much bigger than the um, individual actions. The whole is much bigger than the parts. Dialogue is exactly like that. In a dialogue, your responsibility is not to what's in it for you. It's your responsibility is to the room, to the collective, to have the best possible conversation. To make good decisions, have good outcomes for societal gain rather than personal gain. All participants come to the table as equals. That's a characteristic of bees. That's something I learned from bees that I was able to bring into my world of dialogue. I'm going to finish with a short reading from uh, Bee Time that maybe brings all of these themes about bees and dialogue and uh, dialogue together. In Apiaries, I learned powerful lessons from the bees about how we humans can better understand our place in nature, engage people in events with greater focus and clarity, interact more intensely in our relationships and communities, and open our hearts and minds to a deeper understanding of who we are as individuals, communities, and a species. I came to think of these apiary moments as bee time. I was the director of my university's center for dialogue. My work had evolved into realms far from bees. I was facilitating discussions of the complex and nuanced issues that face contemporary human societies. The settings were classes and workshops, large public dialogues and private one-on-one -on -one conversations, sometimes focused on adversarial and controversial public issues, sometimes on the most deeply personal and intimate reflections. A few years after I had moved into this new world of human interface, I was interviewed by a journalist who noted that bees and dialogue didn't seem connected and wondered whether they had anything in common. Absolutely, I responded. Initiating a dialogue requires the same attention as entering an apiary. Both stimulate a state of deep listening, engage all the senses, hearing without judging. Through dialogue, time slows down, as it does in apiaries. Focus sharpens on how participants are interacting. Understandings emerge, issues clarify and become connected, and collaboration surfaces from the intentions and actions of many individuals. Solitary becomes communal. Dialogue has that apiary feeling, reading situations and discerning what there is to learn from each unique constellation of persons circumstances, and issues. Those two rare moments of presence and awareness when deep human interactions are realized, they too are bee time. Thank you. <laughs>